According to a New York Times report out today, special counsel Robert Mueller has a list of almost 50 questions for President Trump as part of the investigation into possible ties to Russia and obstruction of justice. Mr. Trump's legal team has not publicly confirmed if he will sit down for an interview. But the president did weigh in on Twitter, calling release of the questions, quote, so disgraceful and repeating that the probe is a Russian witch hunt. We examined some of the questions and what their release represents with former federal prosecutor Matthew Olson. He also served as senior counsel to Robert Mueller in 2005. Matt Olson, thank you for being back with us. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. So what do you make of these questions overall? The New York Times says that they were read by the special counsel's investigators to the president's lawyers who then compiled them into a list. Do they seem authentic? Well, my, my initial reaction in looking at them is uh, that it would, it's a little unusual, uh, actually quite unusual for a prosecutor to give uh, a witness a list of questions written out or even verbatim uh, in, the, in the way these questions are. Um, it, it does strike me as unusual. I, it would be more common to give a witness maybe a, a couple of topic areas or subjects, but these are very specific questions, so it strikes me as odd. So, it, of course, it raises the question, what, how, what was the genesis of this and if... Uh, the, the New York Times hasn't said, of course, who the source was, but if the source believed them to be accurate, then it, it leaves one wondering how this all came about. It sure does. But it, it, at some level, regardless of how we got them in, or how the New York Times received them, they do offer a really fascinating uh, look inside uh, where the special counsel's investigation is at, at this stage. It, it, for one, it shows you know, how wide-ranging the scope is. It, 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 it extends, obviously, from uh, whether there was collusion uh, during the election, all the way to the obstruction uh, of justice uh, potential charges. So it's a wide-ranging scope. And, and I wanted to ask you about that. So what what are the signposts that you see here? Because they range. There are questions about. Uh, I mean, in fact, there are, there are questions that that point to possible collusion. The president tweeted today. They prove that's not what Mueller is after. But one of the questions was about. You know, did you know that uh, your former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, was approaching the Russians uh, ab for some sort of assistance? Yes, exactly right, Judy. I mean, at least a dozen of the questions really go directly to this question of coordination or collusion between the campaign and uh, and the Russians. And, and in particular, they, they specifically go to the president's own state of mind. What did he know? about uh, whether Paul Manafort or others were cooperating with the Russians. Um, at what point did he learn about that? What was his reaction to those, th um, those events as they were playing out during uh, the first year of his presidency? So um, the, the signposts are that they're very interested in, the, the special counsel is very interested in learning about what the president knew and when he knew it, reminiscent of the Watergate question. And there were questions uh, for the president's close friend, Roger Stone, who was advising him at different points during the campaign, uh, his connections with WikiLeaks. There are just all sorts of points where there could have been a Russia connection there. Absolutely. And it, it goes to, if, if you look at the, at the questions as reported in the New York Times, it talks about uh, what the president was doing and what he knew about uh, people like, uh, like General Flynn, uh, Jim Comey, uh, you know, and, and, and at each stage, what did the president know about those individuals during the time frame that they were actually involved in, whether in Flynn's case being fired or uh, and, and, and in Comey's case being fired as well? Which seems to point to a questions about obstruction of justice, the firing of Comey, the, the Flynn uh, situation, um, and, and a number of others, uh, Jeff, even the treatment of Jeff Sessions, the attorney general. Um, is that, is that, I mean, is that how you see some of these questions? That's exactly how I see it. I mean, the, the, if you look at what happened during the first year of the, of the Trump presidency and but basically what the president was saying and what he was doing, these questions go to what was in his mind, what was the, his intent. And in any, in any criminal probe, the critical question is what was the intent of somebody who's suspected of wrongdoing? Very hard to prove. Uh, often proved circumstantially by incidents or events around those acts. But in this case, those questions go directly to asking the president what was in his mind and, and uh, you know, apparently in order to understand whether his intent was corrupt or not. And there were also a couple of questions around um, the president's business dealings with Russia, financial connections with Russia. What would that say to you? So, that, you know, potentially, again, that, uh, not knowing exactly, but potentially that would, that would say to me, um, what was the motive here? Does the president have a motive 
for, or does the campaign have a motive to curry favor with the Russians? Um, you know, what was behind some of the actions that were taking place during the campaign and during the last year that might explain why the president took some of the steps he did? We're in such a realm of speculation now because we don't know what's going on inside the Mueller investigation. But if these questions were provided, you said it was unusual, but if they were provided to the president's lawyers, could it have been part of an attempt to make the president feel more comfortable about cooperating, sitting down for an interview? Absolutely. You know, it is unusual, but of course, the president is a highly unusual witness. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a high degree of collaboration, cooperation between the Mueller team and the president's lawyers to, to, to reach some ground rules where there would be a degree of comfort for the president to sit down uh, and engage in this kind of a conversation. Now, I would expect that to occur at the tail end of an investigation. Remember, at some point, th this, this is going to wrap up, and at that, the point at which you would talk to somebody like the president under these circumstances would be as you are finishing or getting close to the end of the investigation. And we don't have a sense of where they are uh, along the road. That's right, but one thing we do know is that the, that the Mueller investigation has a lot of information that we don't have, and that's where I think there's some d high degree of risk for the president. No question. Matthew Olson, it's great to see you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks.